Hello, dear viewer. Have you ever wondered about the existence of mythological and powerful beings that can influence the fate of the Earth itself? Today, we embark on an epic journey through the mysteries of the Tsukiheim universe, exploring the legend of the enigmatic Crimson Moon. Imagine a supreme being, whose ruby eyes shine with the intensity of a rainbow kaleidoscope, capable of mixing and distorting all seven colors of the spectrum. This being is known as Brunestad of the Crimson Moon, the Supreme of the Moon, or simply the Crimson Moon. Over 4,000 years ago, this being answered the collective will of the Earth, Gaia, sealing a pact to protect the planet from human corruption in exchange for dwelling on it. Unable to establish its own standards, the Earth needed a celestial body to understand its death and rebirth. The true ancestors, beings based on the image of Brunestad, were created as a natural protection system for the Earth, destined to return it to its primal state. Brunestad traveled the planet, challenging random beings and gathering faithful followers, such as Grantzer Blackmore and TRHVMN Ordenross, in an attempt to eventually take the Earth as his own realm. In the year 300 AD, Brunestad faced a formidable opponent, Kishir Zelrich Schweinorg, a mage wielding the legendary Second Magic. In an epic confrontation, Brunestad attempted to pull the moon to collide with the Earth, but Zelrich, with all his power, pushed it back, preventing the catastrophe. Despite his immense strength, Brunestad was defeated by Zelrich, who had understood the true power of magic, a rule outside of rules. Foreseeing the end of his own life, Brunestad desperately sought to create a perfect vessel that would obey the world's standards. He taught the true ancestors to create their own species, accelerating the process of finding a suitable heir. Although he was destroyed by Zelrich before completing his mission, Brunestad left behind his reality marble, allowing the true ancestors to inherit a seed in which he could insert himself. Two beings stood out as the closest to achieving the necessary purity to become suitable vessels, Arcuade Brunestad, Remake, and Ald Rouge Brunestad. Arcuade, naturally created by the true ancestors, is considered a perfect body, capable of summoning the legendary Millennium Castle through her marble phantasm ability. Ald Rouge, on the other hand, holds control over the primate murder, granting her monstrous power, superior even to Brunestad himself. However, Brunestad has yet to fully merge with Arcuade, remaining as an alternate personality hidden in her consciousness. This personality, known as Archetype, Earth, is the manifestation of the Crimson Moon itself, capable of awakening overwhelming power that leaves even the mighty Shiki Ryugi unable to see her death. Although the true ancestors are considered children of Brunestad, only he is seen as perfect, while the others are seen as failures. This imperfection is the cause of their bloodlust and the corruption that leads them to feast on humans, establishing a connection with the Moon. In the worlds of fate, where Zelrich was not bitten by a dead apostle and remained human, the faithful follower of Crimson Moon, Grantzer Blackmore, despaired at the death of his master and allowed himself to be killed by the Holy Church. Throughout this journey, we explored the mysteries surrounding the legend of the Crimson Moon, a supreme being that defies the limits of power and existence. Its influence permeates the Tsukiheim universe, shaping the fate of the true ancestors and the humans who cross their path. With that said, thank you for watching and see you next time. Stay tuned for more epic adventures in this fascinating mythological universe.